You've seen a 34% pay increase in your salary. You make almost $30 million. Why should your workers not get the same type of pay increases that you're getting leading the company? For the first time in history, the United Auto Workers are on strike against all three big automakers at the same time. So that is General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis. And in the uh, midst of all this, the CEO of GM, Mary Barra, was on CNN and uh, was questioned on why she has seen so much of an increase in her pay compared to her workers and did not give a good answer. And I'm going to really break down just how ridiculous her answer is. First here, a little more on uh, the strike. So as CNN writes, the targeted strike against three plants includes fewer than 13,000 of the UAW's 145,000 workers, but union president Sean Fain has threatened to grow the strike if the automakers refuse to meet workers' demands. Automakers have scoffed at the union's call for large raises, a four-day work week, and expanded pension program, among others. So I've discussed a lot of the demands in previous videos. I'm not going to go through all that again here, but I will mention that one of the um, asks from the uh, union is initially was a 40% pay bump, which is in line with the pay bump that these major CEOs are seeing. They have now since brought that down to, I believe, around 30%, but are still looking for a major pay raise because they see these executives of these companies making <laughs> records amounts of money while the workers are struggling. So CEO of uh, GM, Mary Barr, was asked about this. And uh, check out her response, and I'm, then I'm going to really break down how ridiculous her answer is. The union is demanding, asking for a 40% wage increase over four years. They're asking for that in part because they say CEOs like yourself, uh, leading the big three, are making those kind of pay increases over the course of the last four years. You've seen a 34% pay increase in your salary. You make almost $30 million. Why should your workers not get the same type of pay increases that you're getting leading the company? Well, if you look at uh, compensation, my compensation, 92% of it is based on performance of the company. I think one of the strong aspects of the way our compensation for our represented employees is designed is not only do, are we putting a 20% increase on the table, we have profit sharing. So when the company does well, everyone does well. And for the last several years, that's resulted in record profit sharing for our represented employees. And I think you have to look at the whole uh, compensation package, not only 20% increase in gross wage, but also uh, the profit sharing aspect of it, world-class health care, and there's several uh, other features. So we think we have a very competitive offer on the table, and that's why we want to get back there and get this done. But if you're getting a 34% pay increase over four years, and you're offering 20% to employees right now, do you think that's fair? Well, I think when you look at the overall the overall structure and, and the fact that 92% is based on performance and you look at uh, what we've been doing of sharing in the profitability when the company does well, I think uh, we've got a very compelling offer on the table. 92% of her pay is tied to performance. I'm going to get to what that means in a second here and how it exposes one of the many things that are rotting at the heart of all these massive corporations. But first, just on its face, Mary Barra has seen a 34% increase in her compensation. Her workers have not seen that. At no point did she explain why that's okay, why it's okay for the CEO to see a 34% increase in her pay while the workers that are making the value in the company, the, the reason the company exists, why it's okay for them to not see that increase. No explanation there at all. Just, you know, trying to explain why she's paid what she's paid which gets to performance-based pay. 92% of our compensation is tied to performance. Now, most people, you know, maybe not knowing much about how this all works, would think, well, I guess GM's doing very well. They're not laying off any employees, right? Uh, all the workers are doing very well. They're all making a lot of money. The whole company's doing so great. So because the whole company's doing fantastic, the CEO gets an increase in her pay. That's fair, right? Except that's not what's going on. GM, as I'll get to, has been laying off a lot of employees. Yet, Performance-based pay, the performance is the performance of the stock. So if you as GM are buying up your own stock through stock buybacks, which is now legal, was not legal before 1980, but is now legal, then you're going to see increases in your stock because you are artificially inflating your own stock. 
And the reason why she wants to tie 92% of her compensation to performance to the stock is because that is not taxed the same as salary is. That's why all these CEOs never look at what their, what their salary is. Look at what their total compensation is. That gives you the real idea of what they are actually making because a lot of their money is made through it being tied to the stock of the company. Let's get to now breaking more of this down, starting with um, just how much CEO uh, Mary Barra has been making over the past several years. So uh, GM reported that Barra made a total of $28.979 million in 2022, compared with $29.136 million in 2021 uh, for running the company and chairing the board of directors. For 2020, Barra took home $23.7 million in total compensation and $21.6 million in 2019. So based on these continued pay increases, except for uh, 2022, which I'm going to get to how this is just funny, but I'll get to it in a second. Um, but all these pay increases practically every year and basically made the same amount, you know, in 2022 and in 2021 with uh, 29 million, essentially. But you'd think, OK, performance based pay, that means the company has been doing very well. All, all the workers have been doing fantastically over the course of all of these pay increases from uh, the GM CEO here. Yet, let's check each of these years. 2018, uh, cutting 15% of its salaried workers. Uh, 2019, GM cutting 4,000 workers. 2019 again, uh, laying off 800 workers. 2020, cutting 700 jobs. 2021, uh, GM shrinking their uh, one of their workforces or one of their plants by a third. 2022, no layoffs planned, <laughs> which this was going to what I was saying earlier about this being funny. This is the only time where uh, there wasn't a pay increase for Mary Barra <laughs> when there were no layoffs in 2022. And then uh, 2023, so we'll see the impact of this next year or... or uh, you know, next quarter or whatever, but um, cutting 500 salaried employees 2023. So I'm sure her pay will increase uh, next year. This is not about perform, not about the performance of the company. It's about how well the stock is doing. So why as the, has the stock been doing so fantastically? Oh, by the way, I, I missed one. <laughs> Just might as well bring this up. Uh, laying off 936 in uh, just a month ago. So there you go. So why has uh, the uh, the company been doing so well? Because the stock, stock buybacks, all of the profits, all of the money that GM has on hand, a lot of that has been going to stock buybacks to artificially inflate the price of the stock, which then goes directly to the increases that Mary Barra sees. So while all these layoffs are happening. You can say, oh, GM maybe isn't doing all that great. They're laying off all these employees. The way that she looks at performance is based on the stock of the company. You can't be seeing increase. I mean, you can because this is a capitalism, but in a, in a uh, world that should exist, the CEO should not be seeing any massive increases in their pay, any increase at all in their salary when they are laying off workers. But in the way the world actually works under capitalism, that is exactly how it operates. You lay people off and you buy stock and your salary goes up as the CEO. So Mary Barr is, uh, has seen, has been the highest paid Detroit three CEO. So the biggest paid or the highest paid of the three uh, big automakers for eight consecutive years. And has received a total compensation of more than two hundred million since assuming the top job in twenty fourteen. And as I said, share buyback. This is the reason: five billion dollars GM to reinstate quarterly dividend and increase share buyback program to five billion. That's a year ago. You wonder why the workers there are pissed off. They're seeing GM artificially inflate its own stock while laying off workers, underpaying workers, workers not getting proper um, either compensation or benefits, yet you have the CEOs here making a crap ton of money. 
And then they go on to, you know, brag about this to, of course, their shareholders because they're increasing the value of those shares. Talking about it here on their on their site. Repurchase program of five billion of common stock. So they brag about this stuff. Well, then turning around and saying, oh, these workers are asking for too much. The workers are the ones that are creating the value for the company. The workers are the reason the company even exists. And you're shit talking them while buying back your own stock. And you wonder why the vast majority of people are on the side of the UAW. So uh, this was posted by CNN. Which side do you sympathize with more? United Auto Workers, 75% of people. Uh, 19% are clowns. <laughs> Just these, mil these multi-millionaires, billionaires, they don't care at all about you, by the way. So unless 19% of people are also incredibly uh, wealthy with hundreds of millions of dollars, they should not be supporting this. And, you know, you shouldn't be regardless unless you're incredibly greedy. But uh, anyone supporting the U.S. auto companies here are either don't know what the hell's going on or are kissing the ass of the wealthy in the hopes that somehow it'll come back to them. And then 2% are honest and don't know what the hell's going on. So <laughs> That's good to see. But this is essentially day one of the strike. The CEOs, or at least the CEO... Mary Barra already making a fool of herself. Let's uh, let's see what the other two do. I am looking forward to some future interviews to see how they continue to dig their own graves. One last thing that I forgot to mention in this video, and I wanted to bring it up, and I so I'm recording this afterwards as I was editing. I'm like, I forgot to make this point. On uh, in Mary Barra's response, she mentions world class healthcare as being one of the major benefits of working for GM. I discussed this. Uh, I have discussed this when discussing why public health care, like Medicare for all, would be so important for Americans. Because that takes that bargaining chip completely off the table. So if you have health care guaranteed to you, if every person, regardless of where you're employed, who you're employed by, if you're employed, if you have health care guaranteed to you and it's all the same, you're all paying into it, you no longer have to worry about a company like GM holding world-class health care over your head as a bargaining chip. With uh, when it comes to unions, freeing these unions up to then argue for higher wages, other benefits, because that healthcare discussion is completely off the table. So this is a just it's an important piece to, to uh, important point to make here because a lot of these companies they they truly benefit under the system where healthcare is not guaranteed to you. They're able to then not pay you as much as you deserve. Because they say, well, sure, your pay isn't as good as it could be, but we have world-class healthcare. Well, if you had Medicare for all, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And these companies would actually have to get closer to paying you what you actually deserve.